Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my second part of creating a manga panel on my Commodore Amiga. If you haven't watched the first part of this video, I'd highly recommend that you do that now before commencing this one. And the manga that this is based on is Lama One Half by Rumiko Takahashi, one of my all-time favourites. So what are we doing? Well, we're creating a manga panel on this Amiga here. This is my 1992 Commodore Amiga 1200. The first video goes into a bit more details, but it's roughly the speed of a 386SX or a Macintosh LC2. Uh, it has a total of 10 megabytes of memory and has a 28 megahertz 68020 processor in it. So nothing exactly incredible, but perfectly decent enough. So. Where did we get to last time? Well, some of you will have seen that basically whilst the layout was going well and I'd managed to get some images in through using my mobile phone and a special app for actually scanning those images, scanning in inverted commas of course, I was running into some, some problems with the Draw Studio software that I was using. So let's see how I've got around that and any issues that I encountered. The first thing I needed to do to complete this panel was actually to finish all the drawings that would be required so there was three more sketches for me to do and thankfully with the Christmas break in the middle I was able to spend uh, an evening uh, just basically going through all of the images that I had on my initial plan and I just sketched them all out and inked them. In the background you'll see me finishing off the final one where Lama or Yoiko as, uh, as he's pretending to be uh, slams into a wall trying to get away from yoga. Once I got the images in, using my mobile phone as described in the first part of this video, I took the images back into Deluxe Paint and edited them. Now the keen eye of you will have noticed that the kana that I put on the very final drawing I was doing didn't actually make sense because unfortunately instead of putting the n sound in I'd actually written she so with the uh, katakana there so I was able to edit that out um, using Deluxe Paint but also as per the uh, first drawings that I did I was able to fill in the blacks and so forth and also add the patterns. I felt that basically drawing in the Kana was working better than perhaps using some of the vectors with the time frame that was involved for this project and um, so I wasn't too bothered about the fact that uh, in this instance I'd actually drawn the Kana for the very final frame of this manga panel. But otherwise, this part of the process was very straightforward. So I'd got it down to a bit of a fine art, you know, I'd got used to the process again. And as long as I'd imported images around about 150 DPI, I didn't run into any memory issues. So and then I brought these images into Draw Studio. Now, this is where I began to run into some issues. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit more towards the end of this video. I started work on the panel which I'd created in uh, the first part and I was trying to get it so that Yoga's um, uh, body would be cut out against the rest of the panel so that he would stand proud of basically everything and that way I could get layers and so forth but unfortunately the postscript export just did not support transparency so I then tried basically creating a vector around the shape of his body but the way that Draw Studio works in this instance is that yes it can use a bitmap as a fill but in order to to actually fill the bitmap proportionally you have to use um, a bitmap tile fill as it were and the only way that you can size this is by using basically a DPI setting that you tap into Draw Studio and whilst this is possible it was getting messy very quickly and it soon became apparent that actually whilst I could spend many many hours actually producing a panel that looked beautiful Draw Studio really wasn't the best application to be doing this on um, something more, much more like a desktop publishing package would be definitely the, the most advising but unfortunately I don't actually have uh, one of those available which was going to allow us to actually accomplish this task so I decided to simplify by putting each of the pictures into their own little frame within the overall panel. This isn't something that's completely unusual, I mean if you look at many manga for example Urusai Yatsura here, you'll see that basically every single image is within its own little frame within the overall panel so this is not exactly out of the ordinary so obviously if I was using a more modern system this wouldn't be an issue but I had to work within the limitations of the software and hardware environment that I was working working in. So whilst you can see in the background me working in Draw Studio, I wanted to touch upon some of the things that working on this panel actually brought to my uh, the forefront of my mind basically. Because a lot of commentary on uh, YouTube and recollections on the internet about the Amiga's overall demise will focus on sort of the poor business decisions of Commodore, uh, the fact that the hardware became further and further behind, meaning that systems like the Super Nintendo and the Mega Drive and then obviously the uh, fifth generation consoles like the PlayStation and Saturn and so forth overtook it it all focuses very much on the business stroke game side of things but one of the things that people do often forget about the Amiga is that it was actually a computer you could use this for productivity what you're seeing in the background is not something that you would necessarily be doing on your Super Nintendo for example 
And um, one of the things that really did occur later on in the Amiga's commercial lifespan is that we did actually start getting some very good software. So we had things like TypeSmith, which you would have seen in the first video, Fabulous Vector um, Font uh, Creation Pro or Outline Font Creation Program, and packages like Draw Studio, which were excellent vector art packages, which also had some page layout capabilities, and other applications like Wordworth and Final Writer, as well as desktop publishing applications like PageStream, really moved it up a notch. And so win a completely Amiga environment. This software was brilliant. Um, there was very little to fault it in many respects. However, the problem was is that by the mid-90s, it was very much a Macintosh and PC world, particularly PCs, because uh, even the future of the Macintosh was somewhat in doubt by about 1995-96 or so. But wherever you found these systems, they were entrenched in their applications. So you had Macintoshes working in the publishing industry and within art shops and uh, within print shops and so forth. And the PC was basically with Windows and MS-DOS king within the office environment. And one of the things is that whilst you had plenty of applications that were perfectly decent on the Amiga, in fact very good on the Amiga in some cases, when you actually brought those into other environments such as say for example you wanted to bring a piece of postscript files that you've created on your Amiga and brought it into the Mac you sometimes got problems as I did creating this for some reason my first initial layout actually corrupted and would not fix itself until I completely restarted it from scratch and then my Macintosh would read the postscript file completely fine again but it was these little annoyances which I did encounter back in the day back in the 90s when I'd have to bring my files that I created on the Amiga into the Windows or the Macintosh environments. It's just one of those things, unfortunately, when your system of choice slips out the mainstream because Adobe obviously supports its standards and its software to the hilt. But a third party, such as the programmers of Draw Studio, they're working to a standard that may or may not be documented very well, that's changing all the time. And so they're kind of always sort of behind the curve a little bit. And this is one of the sad things about Yamiga dropping behind it wasn't necessarily that the software was bad, it was just the fact it wasn't first party software in many instances. Another very slight issue in this day and age, but one that was definitely an issue back in the day, was the fact that Amiga actually really wasn't great for creating printed output. In fact, it was something that was pretty much brought up from the minute that Amiga was launched in 1985, is actually how poor some of its printer support was and how poor quality the printouts were. That situation did improve a lot, but the printing system built into Amiga's operating system actually did leave a lot to be desired, so much so that anybody who actually really wanted to do any serious printing by the mid-90s would have been using an application like Turbo Print from iresoft or something like Studio 24 or 2 that I think it was called. Now this improved the situation quite a lot. But one of the things I noticed in Draw Studio was the complete absence of being able to specify margins and so forth. So when I brought this postscript file that this very application exported onto my Macintosh, the actual margins that uh, were interpreted were just completely whack. They didn't match up with what I'd done in Draw Studio at all. So I don't know whether this is an issue with the Macintosh interpreting the postscript file incorrectly or something slightly odd is happening on the Amiga side. My money would be something slightly strange happening on the Amiga side because this was the kind of thing that I encountered a lot back in the day I was producing artwork which I'll take to the print shop and yes I'd get it back but the problem is that sometimes some things would be cut off at the margins or the proportions would be slightly wrong and it used to be a bit of a nightmare it just reminded me of that I'm not trying to knock the Amiga I'm just trying to give a bit of context as to why perhaps as a productivity machine the Amiga fell out of favour as well if we only look at things through the prism of games and the business decisions of Commodore, we're only ever going to get half the story, or part of the story, of why the Amiga ultimately began to fizzle away in the, uh, as the third computer system, particularly in Europe. The final thing that I want to just bring up about the Amiga environment is that most people will laud its excellent multitasking capabilities and I will be the first one to put my hands up and say the Amiga is a class act when it comes to multitasking within the hardware that it has available to itself. It's always been able to multitask from day one, from 1985. It was part of the system. Um, but one thing it never really had was memory protection, also virtual memory. So memory protection essentially is the operating system stopping an application from uh, even running out of memory and then crashing the system and bringing the whole house of cards down and also stopping applications from grabbing memory from applications that are not itself for example 
Virtual memory allows you to essentially uh, bring in more assets, say for example you want to load more images than you actually have actual random access memory in your computer. It'll be able to sort of cache certain amounts of files on a hard disk and swap that into main memory as and when required. Yamiga generally lacks this. There are third party applications that can actually add this to the operating system, but it never really works that well, if you ask me. And one of the problems that Draw Studio will encounter is the fact that when it runs out of memory, it doesn't just say out of memory. If you import bitmaps and you're out of memory, more often than not, it will just crash the entire computer and you'll have to start from basically, well, when you last saved, if you saved at all. It's just one of the things about the Amiga that whilst it was superb at multitasking and actually by the time of Commodore's demise with Amiga OS 3.1 it was a relatively stable system, it was not without its faults in those areas. But to be fair the Macintosh was no better in this regard. Whilst it had virtual memory and allowed you to actually bring in assets that were bigger than your main memory, it was notorious for crashing. You know, if you did something in Photoshop that the Mac didn't like, up came the bomb and more often than not that meant a reboot as well. And the same thing also applied to Windows. Particularly 3.1, you would get your blue screen of death with a general protection fault and so forth. So this is not me trying to knock the Amiga as saying, ha, everybody else is doing it so much better. But it's one of the issues that I ran into. So thank goodness I was only doing one page because any more than one page with this amount of bitmaps on it would have seriously pushed my 10 megabyte Amiga to its limits. But let's end on a high note because there is much to sing the praises of here. Draw Studio is a superb application and one that I really enjoyed doing to create this project. I did have to simplify things as I said, however just to draw a line under things, pun fully intended, it allowed me to just basically get the result done. And whilst I could have spent more time actually finessing the speech bubbles because they are a little bit rough around the edges by using the grid tool a little bit better, the actual end result is actually rather impressive for a system that came from 1992 essentially. Now, I'm looking at this through the eyes of somebody who is an artist. Now, artists tend to critique their own work, and sometimes it means that we look at other people's work and we have nothing but praise for everybody else, but when we look at our own work, we can only see inferiority. And I'm going to be a liar if I said to you that I didn't look at this panel and think, huh, that could have been better. You know, I could have tweaked Yoga's nose so that it was more masculine. You know, it does look a little bit feminine there. But, hey, you know, you can generally tell it's Yoga. And also there are certain things which I'm looking at here that I think to myself, well, this is a good start because this is the kind of area of work that I do want to go into. I want to be doing more illustration work and, hey, maybe one day I'll be able to make my own manga and that properly as a, you know, a published author and so forth. So this has actually been quite enlightening for me. And whilst I haven't done a huge amount of this stuff on modern systems, it's reinforced to me that actually, whilst it's great to tinker about on these old systems and I get a huge amount of enjoyment out of it, don't do it to the detriment of making sure that your skills stay up to date in the modern age because it's very easy to fall down a rabbit hole and find yourself five years later knowing everything about Draw Studio or Deluxe Paint or whatever it might be and suddenly finding that things like Adobe Illustrator and so forth have moved on so far that you've actually become so far behind. So just make sure with these things I guess that you don't neglect actually keeping your skills up with the modern things. But as I was saying, I was really rather surprised at how well the Amiga pulled this off. Yes, I had a few little problems with the odd crash here and there, but largely, once I actually worked out what was likely to cause Draw Studio, i.e. bringing in bitmaps that were far too big for my main memory, it worked solid as a rock. And actually, when you look at this, there is nothing about this that says to you, this was designed on a computer that was launched 27 years ago. In fact, actually now in 2020, 28 years ago almost. So it's a pretty good result overall. I'm not saying that you couldn't do this on a Macintosh or you couldn't do this on a PC of this era. Of course you could. How on earth did they lay out all those textbooks and so forth that we would have had at school or that you would have found in the library? But the fact remains is that it's relatively unsung that the Amiga was a decent computer for productivity on. In many ways it was unparalleled for home productivity. The thing that happened was is that PCs in the main just got cheaper and so it was therefore much more um, accessible for people to go out and buy themselves a 386 or a 486 PC. And of course obviously you had the benefit of being able to play games like Doom and Magic Carpet and uh, Discworld and so forth which weren't seen the light of day on our dear old Amiga. But I have to say, it's acquitted itself very well, and I'm really pleased with this actually overall. So I hope you enjoyed this process. If you have any questions about the applications I've used, the system that I did this on, or any comments in general, I'd love to hear them. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Peace!
I'd just like to mention that I'm now on Patreon where you can support me from just $5 a month. You'll get early access to videos, your name mentioned at the end of them as well, and also exclusive access to content that nobody else will see, such as works in progress, blogs on my processes, and much, much more, as well as artwork through the post. So if you would like to find out a bit more, take a look at the address down below. And I'd like to extend a massive thank you to my very kind Patreons, who are 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, Anthony Jarvis, Chris Forrester, David Gaxiola, Merlin Katamari, Era42, Joss Stati, Peter47A, Phil Cobbley and Rob Soft. Thank you so much guys, it really means the world to me.